We are in the middle of Torah Tet Vav in the Kutim Haran called Or HaGanuz. And we are up to Ot Zain, part seven of this Torah. And this Torah is all about explaining to us the formula, how we can experience the taste and taste, the Or HaGanuz, the hidden light, the essence of light, the essence of life. Already now, in our physical world, in our physical experience in this world. Because these, uh, this light is a light that is reserved for the tzaddikim in the next world. But Rabbi Nachman is teaching us a way, a method, a formula, how we can merit to experience it already now. And the formula, in short, is all about elevating the malchut, the fear, experiencing fear instead of experiencing fear in a disconnected, fragmented way where a person is afraid and anxious and worried and um, feeling all of these negative constricted emotions because of things in the outside world, that fear energy is elevated and lifted up. And now he's experiencing it in its expanded connected state where he's only uh, experiencing it as an awe of the Ribbona Shlolam. And that's a fear, it's a fear energy, but it's uh, really experienced in an expanded state as awe of Hashem uh, through the awareness of the greatness and the great splendor of the Ribbona Shlolam. That's the dat. And that's what Rabbi Nachman says, that when we lift up this yira, the fear, the malchut, to the source of it, the source of it is the dat, it's that knowing, that awareness, that deep awareness of the greatness of Hashem. And Rabbi Nachman says it's not a, an intellectual uh, consciousness, it's not an intellectual knowing, it's, a, a, it's an experiential, where you're actually feeling in your heart the greatness of Hashem. And that's why the source of that dat is in the heart. And when you do that, Rabbi Nachman says, now that you have entered in the place of, of dat, there are two levels of dat. There is the dat is really divine consciousness. It's, it's divine knowledge. And that's really what the Torah is. And so when we say dat, knowing of Hashem is knowing the Torah. And knowing the Torah is knowing Hashem. And when you know Hashem and it doesn't bring you, it's not... Go, coming together with knowing Torah, then there is something lacking in your not knowing of Hashem. You may be fooling yourself that you're knowing Hashem. And when a person is knowing Torah, and that knowing of Torah is not bringing him to know Hashem, then he may be fooling himself in knowing of Torah. Maybe he just knows the outer form, the outer appearance, the outer manifestation of the Torah. But really the purpose of the Torah is to bring him to know Hashem greater. So these two things must come together. And so when we're speaking about that, the dot knowing of Hashem, the divine uh, consciousness, that is Torah knowledge, Rabbi Nachman says. It, it comes together. And so in that dot, there are two levels. The first level is what's represented by this, the revealed part of the Torah. And the second, the higher level, is what represented by the secrets of the Torah. So the revealed part of the Torah is also called in the Gemara, uh, Sinai, the aspect of Sinai. And Sinai is the ability to know tremendous amounts of Torah knowledge, all the many, many details in the Torah to contain that in your heart. And so Rabbi Nachman says that's level one. And when you enter at this place of Da'at, because you've elevated the Yira, Yira, the Malchut, is really a representation of you in this world. Because your soul that has been uh, now sent into this physical world is, is experiencing the same thing as the Malchut is. Um, the, the Malchut, the Shechina, is Hashem dwelling in the, in, the, in the physical world, so to speak, in order to give it life. And so your soul that is sourced in the highest worlds being now experiencing the physical world, it's, it's, it's really experiencing the same as the Shechina. And uh, according to the Arizal, the Shechina is sent into this world. Hashem dwelling in this world is only to help. It's in order to help your soul. It's in order to help your Neshama in, in elevating, lifting up the sparks of holiness and accomplishing its, its goal, its purpose in this world. And so when you are lifting up the, the, the Shechina, the Yira, the fear energy, the Malchut, to its source, to the expanded consciousness, you're really, that's your personal journey from a disconnected state to a connected state. And so now that you are in the connected state, experiencing the expanded consciousness, experiencing the dot, level one of that, says Rabbi Nachman, is a revealed part of the Torah. Level one is called Sinai. 
and um, and that Sinai suc being successful in integrating that level of divine consciousness, that level of Torah knowledge is dependent on the success and that is dependent on your level of humility. And that means you're surrendering your ego. And so that humility, which is a characteristic of Har Sinai, uh, that's why Hashem chose Har Sinai to give us the Torah, brings us now to practice that attitude okay, of that, of expanded consciousness, of awe of the Rebona Shilolam, um, and that humility to practice that in your in developing your relationship to Hashem and how you're speaking to Hashem and how you're praying to Hashem. And so that will bring you to pray to Hashem um, in, in, a, in a selfless way, meaning that you are so uh, amazed and in awe, experiencing the vastness and the awesomeness of Hashem in, in this conversation that you're having with Hashem in this prayer that you, you're not even, it doesn't even come into your, 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 your list of things to do to, to pray for your own personal desires and your own personal needs because all of that doesn't really exist in the, in the current ex experience that the person is having in the presence of the Rivana Shalala. And so that's um, an aspect of that, praying in that way. And so here this person is taking advantage and of the, the prayer of the tremendous kindness that Hashem gave us to be able to pray to Him, to be able to connect to Him from our physical experience in this world through these words and through these praises. And, um, and that leads a person to uh, the next, uh, the higher state of that, the greater state of that. Um, the greater state of Torah knowledge, the, 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 the next level of Torah knowledge. Why, how does it lead to that? And so Rabbi Nachman explained that when you're praying in this selfless way, when you're praying in this way that your whole interest and your whole, uh, your whole uh, focus is, is experiencing Hashem, uh, the sweetness of Hashem as you're speaking to Him, um, in awe of the greatness of Hashem, then you are fulfilling the, the purpose why Hashem created the world. This is why Hashem created the world. And so now you're giving Hashem the greatest pleasure that a man, that a creation of Hashem can ever give to his creator. And that is that the reason why Hashem created the whole universe is that we should have this opportunity and this ability to connect to Hashem, to experience that infinite sweetness that of Hashem's presence. And now that you're doing that, and you're, you're, you're praying in this way to a point where you're not even at all uh, worried about your physical needs and your physical desires. So now you're giving Hashem, you are the one in the relationship that is giving Hashem, the, that is the giver. You are giving Hashem the pleasure here, rather than usually the relationship between us and Hashem is that Hashem is the giver and we're the receiver. Here you are shifting the dynamics and the relationship and now you are giving Hashem the pleasure and Hashem is receiving from you the pleasure when you're playing, play, praying in this way. And so what does that mean? That means that instead of Hashem being metaphorically the male aspect in the relationship, the giver, and you being the female aspect, now you have shifted that so that the male aspect, Hashem, instead of being the male, is now the female, the receiver. And Rabbi Nachman explains that the male is the hidden and the female is synonymous with the revealed aspects. And so what was hidden beforehand, the aspects of Hashem, of that divine consciousness, that divine knowledge, that Torah knowledge, that were hidden to you beforehand because the dynamics and the relationship between you and Hashem were that Hashem was the male and you were, you were the female. Hashem was the giver and you were the receiver. And now that shift that Hashem is becoming instead of the, the giver, Hashem is the receiver. So that means that the aspects that were hidden beforehand of Hashem, the, the, the transcendence of Hashem that was beyond your capability to grasp or to connect to, that were hidden beforehand, and the secrets of the Torah that were hidden from you, they were concealed from you because they were so deep, they were beyond your comprehension, you were beyond your capability to comprehend and to grasp and to connect to. Now those hidden aspects are becoming revealed. But that's what it means that the male has become the female. The, the hidden has become the revealed. 
because nekevat is soviv gavir, the female aspect, the female energy is surrounding the male and it's, the, it's on the outside, it's the more revealed. So what was before in, inside and concealed has now become outside and revealed. And so that is how through the prayer, through giving Hashem this tremendous pleasure, fulfilling the purpose why Hashem created the world and shifting the dynamics in the relationship so that now Hashem is the receiver instead of the giver is is allowing you and is is giving you the ability to now uh, connect to and to receive those secrets those that part of the Torah that the secrets of the Torah that were that were beyond uh, physical the physical uh, com- cap- capability to understand the physical comprehension and so these are the secrets of the next world these are the secrets of a dimension that is beyond time and space, a dimension that is beyond the limitations and the confines of the physicality. And in those secrets and in that consciousness, in that higher level of that is contained the essence of light and the essence of light, what's called Oha Genus. And Rabbi Nachman explained to us in various ways how these aspects are represented in the story of Rabbi Babar Khana with, with a frog that was swallowed by the the, the serpent that was swallowed by the raven that sat on the tree, and then Rabbi Nachman explained how it fits into the Mishnah, Mesechet Avot, the five possessions of Hashem in this world. And now we're up to Od Zayin, part seven in this Torah, and we're going to see how it fits in to a Pasuk in the Torah. So let's start, uh, let's read inside. And this is the explanation of the Pasuk. And it says that you will be to me a kingdom of priests, Mamlechet Kuanim, Vigoi Kadosh, and a holy nation. And the next Pasuk, And these are the words that you should say to Am Yisrael, that you should speak to Am Yisrael. Okay, so. Rabbi Nachman explains, Mamlechet ze bechina Torah shebenigle, ki bach melachim im lochu, o malchu to bechina nigle, ki em melech beloam, vakot sechin de melech, ki akot sechin de marechitaya. Vekoanim zo bechina tefila, bechinot avraham kanar, ki mosh amroch armenu zikona miracha, shamar kadush la, mar kadush barhu la avraham ata kohen olam. Vekoi kadosh. זה בחינת בית המקדש, בחינות תורה שבניסתר, חניקה קודש. ועל ידי מה זכי לאילו הבחינות? על ידי שיעלה ויקשה בחינת יראה, בחינת דעת, על ידי בחינת משפט קנה. So Rabbi Nachman explains that the words in the Pasuk, ואתם תהיו לי ממלכת כהנים. You should be for me, you should be to me, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. אתם תהיו לי ממלכת כהנים וגוי קדוש. Rabbi Nachman says that the word ממלכת, a kingdom, a kingdom is, uh, Rabbi Nachman says here that it is referring to the revealed part of the Torah. So the revealed part of the Torah is the aspect of Malchut in its perfected form. Okay, and the revealed part of the Torah is the aspect of Malchut and kingdom. Why is that? Because we know this rule that Rabbi Nachman has brought to us a few times in previous Torahs. And he brings us many times in the Kutim Maharan that the aspect of Torah is called Malchut. There's an aspect in Torah called Malchut because the Torah, through the Torah, power and leadership is, is given. People are appointed to be leaders and kings through the Torah. And like the Pasuk says in Mishle, Bi Milachim o Ba Milachim Yimlochu. Through it or because of it, because of the Torah, kings shall rule, meaning that the, the ability to be a king, to be appointed king, the power of being appointed king comes from the Torah. The Torah gives this malchut, and the, and the, the Torah, ha, the, and there, that's the aspect of the Torah that's called malchut. And malchut, the king, is the aspect, so that's, this aspect in the Torah called malchut, Rabbi Nachman says, is the aspect of Torah Shebeniglis, the aspect of the revealed part of the Torah. Why is that? So he says, because the, the king, everyone needs the king. Everyone needs a king. And, um, and 
why, what does it mean that everyone needs a king? That the aspect of a king is something that is connected to the nation. You can't have a nation without a king, and you can't have a king without a nation. And so, en melech am. And so that means that all the other spherot, the keter, chokhmah, bina, etc., could be, uh, they, they don't have to have a relationship with the next world. They don't, their existence and their, what they represent is an importance and it's a role that is uh, independent. It doesn't really need a nation, each one of those aspects. Whereas Malchut is all about uh, r- ruling over a nation and it's all about c- unifying the people. Um, it's all about unifying the people. That's what the Melech, that's what the king does, ruling over a nation. And so Malchut is specifically Malchut is the aspect that is related to the people. It's the aspect that's related to all the people, not someone specific. You can say maybe chesed, kindness is about uh, giving to someone uh, a kindness, doing kindness with someone, but that's one person specifically. The aspect from all the spheroes that has to do with everyone at large, not with anyone specific, is the aspect of malchut. And, and that's the, the kingship. Because, because the king has to be a king to all the subjects. And, and the, the highest of the highest, the greatest, most, most uh, wise advisors, and the lowly, lowliest of the lowliest of the subjects in the kingdom. They're all under the same rule, and there's, they're all in one system that the king organizes, right? By him being uh, the king over this whole nation, over this whole people, that... Uh, organizes all the different parts of this system to uh, fulfill to fulfill their role, and so that's what Malchut and that's what a Melech represents. The Malchut, the Melech represents, is really specifically that's the aspect that's connected to everyone at large, without any distinction. And so, which part of the Torah, if we were to point to a certain part, a certain aspect of the Torah, that is equally needed by everyone that applies to everyone equally okay kind of like the king that rules over all the subjects equally everyone is in that system under that kingship of the the, the king and that's the aspect of the revealed part of the torah that we mentioned earlier in the gemara that from the gemara rabbi nachman brought to us that the revealed part of the torah is the part of the torah that is uh that is called that is that is that rep, is represented by the Marich Itai. Marich Itai. Everyone needs the merchant that sells grains. Everyone needs the merchant that sells flour. Okay, not everyone needs the merchant that sells the most exquisite pieces of art. Okay, that's like the secrets of the Torah. But everyone has a need for bread that they're going to eat that day. So everyone needs the merchant that sells grain. And so everyone needs, the Gemara compares the revealed part of the Torah, the halachot, for example, to that merchant that sells grains, because everyone needs the revealed, everyone can access, and everyone has, an, ha, everyone has a, a use for it. Everyone has an appreciation for it. No matter where they are, what level they are at, they have an appreciation, they have a need for the revealed part of the Torah, and they're able to understand it. And they're able to connect to it. It's graspable, right? So this is the aspect of Malchut in the Torah. And that is represented in this Pasuk as by the word Mamlechet, the Mamlechet Kohanim. So the next word in the Pasuk, Kohanim, which aspect of the formula, which part of the formula does that represent? Rabbi Nachman says it represents prayer. Why? Because Kohen, the aspect of the Kohen is the aspect of Chesed. We know this Kabbalistically from the Arizal and from the Zohar, that the Kohen is always the aspect of Chesed, the Levi is the aspect of Gevura, and the Israel is the aspect of Tiferet in the middle. So the Kohen is the aspect of Chesed, and we know from earlier in this Torah, Rabbi Nachman taught us how prayer is called Chesed. It's the aspect of Avram because there's no greater kindness, there's no greater Chesed in the world than the kindness Hashem has done for us to give us the opportunity and the ability from our lowly place, from our lowly existence, temporary existence, physical existence, limited existence, to connect to the infinite, to the eternal, 
to the omnipresent, to the to the transcendent one. Baruch Hu, blessed is He, right? And so that's the greatest kindness in the world. And so when we speak about the Kohanim, when we say the word Kohanim in this pasuk, the Kohanim is the aspect of kindness, and that represents prayer. But Rabbi Nachman gives us another proof, as he always does, even though he can easily tell us, oh, as it says in the Zohar, many times he will choose to give us proof from Sukkim specifically um, uh, for, for that Yisod. And so he, he tells us Kohanim is the aspect of Avraham, and how do we know that Kohanim is the aspect of Avraham? So we know that Kohen is Chesed and Avraham is Chesed. But Rabbi Nachman gives us this, um, this Gemara in Masechet Nadarim that says that a Kaddish Baruch Hu told Avraham Avinu, Ata Kohen Olam, that you are a, an, a priest forever. You are an eternal priest, an eternal Kohen. And so Avram is the aspect of Kohen, as we see in that Gemara. Hashem tells him that you are a priest forever. You're a Kohen forever. And Avram is Chesed. Okay, and then the next part in the Pasuk, Vegoi Kadosh, and a holy nation. So uh, in, in yesterday's uh, Shir, we saw how Rabbi Nachman explains one of the five possessions, right? The Mishnah and Mesechet Avot. One of the five possessions of Hashem in this world is the Beit HaMikdash. And Rabbi Nachman explains that the Beit HaMikdash represents the secrets of the Torah, which are called Kodesh, which are called the aspect of Kedusha. And they're the aspect that is transcendent. It's the aspect of Dat, the higher aspect of Dat. And, uh, and so here too, Rabbi Nachman says, a holy nation is referring to the Beit HaMikdash, Kodesh, holy, uh, the house of holiness. And this, says Rabbi Nachman, represents the part of the formula, the final part of the formula, the secrets of the Torah, which are called Kodesh, and which are called Kodesh. And then how do we merit uh, these aspects, all of these aspects? So these, all of these aspects, right, starting from, starting from Mamlechet. We said Mamlechet is the first level, level one in Torah knowledge, level one of the Torah consciousness, divine consciousness, is called Sinai. It's the revealed part of the Torah. The next part is we said Kohanim, Kohen, we said is the prayer, the selfless prayer. And finally, we said Goy Kadosh, the holy nation, represents the secrets of the Torah. How do we merit these three parts? What comes before these three parts in the formula? That is the part where we elevate, lift up the Yira, the fear energy, uh, to its source. And how do we do that? We do that through the, the self-assessment, the self-inquiry. We also explained yesterday, it's the aspect of the self-inquiry, uh, self-assessment, self-judgment, where a person is realigning themselves with their purpose, why they're here, and what Hashem wants from them in this world. And then, next part, next pasuk, these are the words that you should speak. Beautiful. So Rabbi Nachman explains like this. He says, the next pasuk is, these are the words that you should speak to B'nai Israel. Who should speak? Who, who is saying to who? Who is speaking to who in this pasuk? Hashem is speaking to Moshe. Hashem is telling Moshe, these are the words that you, Moshe, should speak to B'nai Israel. So Rabbi Nachman says that what is the speech? What is the speaking aspect represent in this formula? What, what, is, this, what is the dibur? How is the Dibur represented in this formula? The speaking aspect, says Rabbi Nachman, is always known as Malchut. It's always known as Malchut, and Malchut, as we're saying, is this aspect, the first part of the formula. You're elevating, you're lifting up and returning the Malchut, which is the fear energy, 
right? You want it to become a, instead of a disconnected fear, you want it to become a fear of Hashem, what's called Yirat Shamaim, the fear of heaven, right? Yirat Shamaim, the fear of Hashem, the awe of Hashem. That's, that's lifting up the Malchut. And so this is the Dibor. The Dibor is the Malchut. Why, why is the Dibor Malchut? So first of all, again, the Zohar says this all over, that, that call the voice that emanates from a person is the Tiferet, which is called in the parts of Kutsha Bihu. And then the voice is then split up into its uh, different letters and words. The voice energy, which is the source energy, is then manifested and formed in the t specific letters and combined into specific words and into sentences. And so that's the, the, the two aspects of Kuchabichu and Shkinte, Tiferet and Malchut. Malchut being the, the speech that manifests and actualizes the source energy. Okay, and so that's the way the Zohar explains it in many places. But Rabbi Nachman gives us a beautiful Gemara just to show us so many times Rabbi Nachman opens, us our, up, opens up our eyes to show us all these Gemaras and all these Psukim, how the whole Torah is full of the secrets of the Torah. And there's a, there's a deeper understanding behind every line in the Gemara. And so this is one of the examples. Look, Rabbi Nachman gives us this, this uh, Gemara, Mesechet Brachot, that says that a person who has a fear of Hashem, the awe of Hashem, what's called Yerat Shemaim, his words are heard. Okay, so the word, the power for your word, the power of words, again, a very important rule, and this is a rule that the Maharal says, I heard this many times in Shirim from Bibi Moshe Shapiro, uh, that's how, that speech is only uh, called speech to the extent that that speech is heard. Okay, and so that's why every Dibor is only a Dibor, a Dibor to the extent that that Dibor is received by someone else. If you speak in a closed room and no one heard you, so did you really speak? You didn't really speak. Because speech is a, there is a giving and a receiving. There are two people, there are partners uh, that make, there are two people. The person that hears the words that you are saying is, is a partner in making the word be a word. And that's why there is such a great um, uh, severity to someone who hears Lashon Hara. Someone who hears, listens to slander, receives slander, is, is part, is taking part in the giving over, in the slander, in the Lashon Hara, in the negative words, in the negative speech, in the gossip. Uh, and that's why the Gemara tells us that Gadol Ha'one Amen Yotemina Mivarech. The person who answers Amen to a bracha, meaning, what does it mean, Amen? It means that I have heard and I have accepted the bracha and I agree to this blessing that you have just made. The person who answers Amen, the Gemara says, is greater than the one who makes the bracha. And the reason is because he finishes. He finishes, it's almost like a two person, it's a transaction that the, there's a giving of the Debra and receiving of the Debra, and only from the giving and the receiving of the word of the speech that that speech is created, is manifested. And so there is a, that's the importance of Debra. It's just like the fact that we just, men, we just mentioned a few lines earlier, in Melech Biloam. There is no king without a nation. And so that means that if a person puts a crown on his head and he says, I'm king, he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not really king. He can imagine that he's king, but he's not king. A person is only king to the extent that there are people that accept him to be the king. And so a, a debor is only a debor to the extent that that debor is heard by other people, by someone else, accepted by someone else. And so this aspect of debor is synonymous. It's the same aspect of malchut. And it's the same aspect, as we know, as Yirat Shemaim, the fear of Hashem. And that's why, that's the secret, that's the deeper meaning, the Kabbalah, in the words of the Gemara that say that to the extent that a person has the fear of Hashem, Yirat Shemaim, his words will be accepted. Meaning that the Shlemut, the, 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 how perfect and how effective and how powerful is your aspect of Malchut, is your aspect of Dibur, that's dependent on your Yirat Shemaim, on your fear of Hashem. Because that's the aspect of Malchut, it's Yirat Shemaim. And so that's why when it says here, Dibur, uh, these are the words, these are the Devarim, 
These are the words that you should speak to Am Yisrael. It's referring to this aspect of Yira, the fear, the Malchut. And why is Hashem telling Moshe that he should speak these words? Hashem, that you should speak, Moshe, you should speak these words? Because Moshe is the Dat. And the Tikkun rectifying the Malchut is reconnecting her with the Dat. And this is also uh, alluded to in the Pasuk that Shlomo Amelech says, Gam below dat nefesh lotov. Rabbi Nachman has a whole Torah about this. That without, when, 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 without dat, the nefesh is no good. And nefesh, Rabbi Nachman explains uh, from the nefesh ruach neshama, the nefesh is represented by the dibur. It's the malchut. Uh, the ruach, the ruach is the aspect of the kol, the voice, right? And uh, and the as, it's the aspect of the tiferet. Uh, and the neshama is the aspect of the 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 machshava, and so the dibor is the aspect of malchut, and so when it says in the pasuk, Shlomo Amalek says that gam belo dat nefesh lo tov, without dat, the nefesh is not good. That means that when the nefesh, which is the speech, the malchut aspect, if it's the speech is disconnected from the dat or the malchut. Or the fear, yira, which are all the same aspect. Yira, malchut, dibur, fear, kingship, and speech are all the same aspect, the same sphere. If it's without dat, if it's disconnected from the dat, so nefesh lotov. The nefesh is not good. It's disconnected. That's that's a fragmented state. And so that what does that teach us? That teaches the opposite is true as well. That means that the tikkun rectifying and making the nefesh tov, making the nefesh good, filled with the good from the higher, the higher spherot, with the blessings of the higher spherot, is done, is accomplished by having her connected with the dot, elevating and lifting up that yira energy to be in the in the in the expanded consciousness. And so that's why Dafka Hashem tells Moshe specifically, Moshe was the aspect of dot. He should speak these words, meaning that these words should be spoken in that connected, expanded, connected to that expanded consciousness of Moshe. And um, and and uh, he, he Rabbi Nachman brings how the the pasuk and Shemot says that ki yelahem davar ba ilai that when they have a davar, okay, the pasuk, the literal meaning, the the simple meaning of the, what's going on in the pasuk over there is that when they have a question. When Am Yisrael, when anyone in Bnei Yisrael, when they have a question, uh, they, they have a suffix, a doubt, and in, in how to fulfill and how what does it mean, certain halachot in the Torah, ben din the din, etc. And it, 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 they should come, be dumb, they should come and bring the questions and their doubts to Moshe Rabbeinu, and he will answer and he will clarify anything that needs to be clarified. But Rabbi Nachman explains a deeper meaning in that pasuk, another another dimension, another meaning in that pasuk. He says, Ki davar ba ilai. When they have davar, when they have a davar, a word, they should come, they will come to me. What does that mean? That means that means that B'nai Israel, through the aspect of Israel, are able to take the davar and reconnect it to Moshe reconnected to the expanded consciousness. What's this aspect of Yisrael through which the aspect, Rabbi Nachman says, as we see in this Pasuk, through the aspect of Yisrael, they're able to take the Malchut and reconnect her to, to Moshe, reconnect her to the Dat, to the expanded consciousness. The aspect of Yisrael, Rabbi Nachman explained earlier in this Torah, uh, is the aspect of the self-inquiry, the self-judgment, the self-assessment. That's the aspect of Mishpat. As we saw in the Pasuk, Chukavu Mishpatav Yisrael, his laws and his judgments to Yisrael. So this is the aspect of Yisrael, is the aspect of the Choshen, that was the breastplate, um, um, the Choshen Mishpat, the breastplate of judgment. Okay, and so that's the aspect of Yisrael, Chukavu Mishpatav Yisrael, the laws and the judgments to Yisrael. And this is the way this is the method that the, the practice through which they take the davar, ki davar, when they take the davar, the malchut, the yira, the fear, and they bring it to Moshe, ba ilai, they bring it to Moshe, da, to the expanded consciousness. And so now the continuation of this pasuk is, ele adivarim ashe tidaber, 
El Bnei Israel. You should say these words, speak these words to Bnei Israel. Why to Bnei Israel? Because they specifically, the Bnei Israel, through their aspect of self-judgment, self-inquiry, self-assessment, the mishpat aspect, mishpat of Israel, they are able to bring it, the dibur, and to connect it to Moshe, and to connect it to its source, and to rectify it. Okay? And so... And so, that meaning that the Dibur being spoken, being connected in its source, in Moshe, in the aspect of Moshe, and that happens through Bnei Israel. It happens through Bnei Israel, through that, that self-judgment, the self-assessment, the self-inquiry. And so then Rabbi Nachman summarizes that he says that we find in, in short, in summary, we find that through connecting the Yira, the, the Yira energy, the fear energy, by connecting it and lifting it back to its source, which is that, which is expanded consciousness. And how do we lift it up? How do we bring it back to its source? Through the self-judgment, through the Mishpat. Through that, we merit the revealed part of the Torah, which is the level one of the Torah knowledge of the divine consciousness. And that, through that, revealed part of the Torah, the level one of that Torah consciousness was called Sinai, we merit to pray to Hashem. Um, and when we pray to Hashem in that greater way, through that awe of Hashem, then we merit the secrets of the Torah. And Rabbi Nachman says that he finishes off this uh, part seven, Ot Zayin in this Torah by saying that Davar, the word Davar is the aspect of Yira, he brings us another proof how davar, dibur, um, is is an aspect of fear. It's the aspect of malchut. And he brings another pasuk for this that says in, in Malachi, it, it says the pasuk, Az nidberu Hashem. And then those who fear Hashem spoke, and so or spoke to each other. And so we see that those that fear to Hashem speak, meaning that speech it comes from the sphere of Malchut, which is the energy of fearing Hashem. And we'll see, Bezrat Hashem, the next part, Otchet, in the next year.